Good evening and welcome to the Malden Zone. My name is Karen Colon Hayes and I'll be your host for tonight. For the past few months, different members of uh, the mayor's office have been hosting the show and we'd like to give a little bit of about what, you know, what we do here in our positions in the mayor's office. We've also had, uh, the mayor has uh, hosted the show, Ron Cochran has hosted the show, Kevin Duffy and Kathleen Manny Hall and now tonight it's me. Karen Colon Hayes, I am the Community Outreach Manager for the City of Malden. For those of you who know our mayor, you know that he is a hands-on kind of guy. Um, that's the type of leader that he is, and he wants to be out in the community, talking to people, going to events and functions and uh, business meetings, and really hearing firsthand from the people and the residents of Malden about what's going on. Knowing as mayor that he wouldn't be able to do this as much, he, um, I go out to the meetings, although granted he does make it to a lot of those meetings, but I make it to the ones that he can't. And I take notes and I bring them back to the mayor and we discuss what happened there and I keep him updated on what's going on. On the flip side, it goes the other way around and in the office I'm also there as a resource for these community organizations where they can call in and um, hopefully I can help them out and make their job a little bit easier. Some of these groups in Malden and the nonprofits are run solely by volunteers, so Hopefully, I can help them out and help them with their resources and learn a little bit about you know the, their organizations and what they do. That in turn helps with the number of regular people just calling residents um, looking for services in the city. Sometimes I joke saying it's like a triage uh, station in the mayor's office where people would call from many, many different reasons. And so knowing what these groups do and uh, how they service the public is makes my job easier. Um, so really, I think uh, I have the best job in the mayor's office. Uh, I love going out into the community and meeting these great people and learning about the organizations. And uh, so tonight, um, I'm happy to be able to introduce you to some of the leaders of these groups. We have some great guests tonight, and we'll be joining, um, they'll be joining me to talk about their organizations and what they do here in Malden. So I'm excited to be joined by Mary Beth Leon, who is the president right, of Junior Aid, and Maria Louise, who is a member and I believe a former president. And this group is celebrating their 100 year anniversary. And we'll be hearing from Naomi Brave from the Malden Arts, Marilyn Andrews, who is the president of the Malden CPAC, and Suad Akib and Habiba, who will be here from the American Association for Arab Women, and last but certainly not least will be Heidi Sutherland from the Malden Girl Scouts who is also celebrating uh, their 100 year anniversary. But first I'd like to thank Frank uh, Matuccio and MATV for providing us with this opportunity. Um, so thank you very much. And now let's get to our first guest. So sitting beside me is my friend Maria Louise and Mary Beth Leon who you are the president, I correct? I am the president. Okay. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about how Junior Aid got started? Maybe a little bit about the history, because um, I know I just learned about it recently, but I know that you are, um, the group is long in history here. Mom. Well, as you said, Karen, um, this is our 100th anniversary. Um, in 1912, it originated by a small group of women who um, came together to help the medical hospital. Um, and what they did at the time is they rolled bandages, they collected diapers, they helped um, women who needed assistance with their children um, because, um, you know, single families at that time had nowhere to go. Um, so they Medical hospital, you mean like the Malden? In Malden? Yes, the Malden. Uh -huh. it, it, we always have been based in mm -hmm. Malden, historically. Um, Malden's been our home base. And it's been basically um, residents of Malden. Um, it started out with a small group of woman, women. It now consists of 50 members, um, plus merited members that we have, mm -hmm. which are basically former presidents. Um, and historically, we've been affiliated with the Malden Hospital and focused on getting them um, financial assistance for different projects they were mm -hmm. running, um, equipment they needed in their emergency room, um, equipment-specific departments needed within the hospital. So the focus was on the Malden Hospital mm -hmm. throughout the years until the, the hospital closed. That's right. When and did that close? I um, forgot. I think I was just moving here around maybe like 10... 1998, I believe. Okay. That's right. um, I could be wrong. Okay. But um, at that time is when I um, came in as president. Mm -hmm. 
and we decided to keep the organization going even though we didn't have a home base anymore mm -hmm. um, and we regrouped as a new organization we incorporated under a new name we're now the Malden um, Junior Aid Association um, and not of the Malden Hospital obviously and what we do now is we try to keep the tradition by staying focused on health related issue we, we mm -hmm. gear um, all our fundraising towards <coughs> issues that involve women and children um, we have a lot of great events planned um, mm. during, the, during the year that um, specifically raise money for those kinds of um, programs, resources, people can apply for grants. I think Mary, Aunt, Mary uh -huh. Beth will talk a little bit more about that. Um, and while we um, continue to do fundraising for those specific issues, we're open to um, you know other organizations and nonprofits in the community that might need financial assistance um, they can also apply for the grant oh, um, good to know we give the grants mm -hmm. every two years um, you know under the, the presidencies are two-year term so at the end of a president's term um, they're able to apply for, for these grants and the good thing about junior aid is that every single penny we raise goes back to the community in some way um, we don't have any overhead expenses um, so our dues mm -hmm. um, sort of keep you know that's our working fund to pay for any small expense that might come up but every penny we raise goes back in into these grants oh, that's great great yeah so, so um, and Mary Beth I think is going to tell us a little bit about what we have what we've done um, to celebrate our hundredth year and mm -hmm. some events we have coming up in the future that's great. Before we go there, if you're, um, whichever one could answer this about the grants, how do you find out, how, do, how can somebody apply for a grant? The grants are actually at um, City Hall, or mm -hmm. there, there were some in the Modern Public Library at the YMCA, YWCA. Um, there, are, there should be grants there. If not, you can contact Maria Louise or myself. And um, the deadline, however, is this December 31st. Okay. So it, it's a very short term right now. They've been out since October. So um, it's a little time sensitive mm -hmm. so to get those going. Um, like we said, the grants only go out every two years. So they'll be given out this May at our mm -hmm. annual dinner. Um, they'll be reviewed after the new year. And then the board and the membership agree on what we can give mm -hmm. every two years. Um, I, my two years as president um, is quickly coming to an end. Um, <laughs> But we've been um, a little more focused, a little on hands-on service, which is nice mm -hmm. um, because of the economy. Um, it, it's nice that people can just give up service and give up some um, funds also. So what, to kick off our 100th year, we had um, a fabulous President's Dinner at All Seasons Table where a lot of our past presidents yeah. came and they told a lot of the old stories. I think I was there that yes, night. It was sure. just, <laughs> it was beautiful. It was so yeah, nice. It was great. As the, as was great. The, present president to hear those old stories and, and, and have such a bond with the women. Um, mm -hmm. We also did, um, we had our Valentine brunch, which is an annual thing um, last year, but this year we're also having a little spin on that. We met with the Girl Scouts and we collaborated yeah. with the Girl Scouts for their 100th year celebration and we made um, over 30 blankets wow. that have donated to the Cam Nelly um, Medical Facility for um, children with cancer. Yeah, that was and a great event. I that was in fabulous. On that too. See, the mayor made, he, he made the mayor one, made right? Blanket. <laughs> he did make a blanket. <laughs> and it was just so nice to work with young girls, future junior aid members, hopefully, yeah. and show them that, you know, women do make a big difference and, uh, you know, to be kind of a mentor to that, those young girls was fabulous. Um, we all got a on a bus in May and went to the Red Sox game which um, Fenway Park has also celebrated right. their 100th birthday. So wow. we did that as a group, which was fun. Um, we had well, you guys do a lot of fun stuff. I know. We, we I put the fun in fun <laughs> I like that. Is that we like, like that say. in a group. You're going to work we, hard. Yeah, we work hard, but fun. we know how to play hard, and yeah. it, it is all good um, in the end. But um, we also donated uh, over 100 coats to Bread of Life in October uh -huh. um, for their uh, coat drive. And I actually personally was able to hand some of them out, which um, oh, was nice. very rewarding, very rewarding. Um, we had our gala in November at the Copley, which was also celebrating their 100th birthday. We kind of just <laughs> all <laughs> together. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal. It is. It's <laughs> it, was a, it, is. it was a fabulous year. And, um, of course, we were the, um, one of the three groups to be the Grand Marshals in the parade, which was fabulous. 
So we've had a very right. busy, productive year, and um, the next and second next half is about giving out the grants and um, to you know modeling community-based programs. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we we'll get a lot of applicants to be able to help people in some way. Yeah. Yeah, and we great. meet we meet monthly, yeah. and um, the tradition since 1912 has been to meet in a member's home. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's what we've been doing all these years. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, we a lot of people in someone's <laughs> <Yeah>. house. <laughs> it, it gets a little crowded, but it, it keeps it. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 a tradition that we haven't um, we've decided not to break. So nice. um, that's very nice, and we're always trying to recruit members. I know Mary Beth's going to um, let us know how you can become a member. Um, we work hard um, mm -hmm. fundraising so we can use all the help we can get. Yeah, um, definitely. I know, I think I've been approached a couple times. <laughs> <by the people. laughs> uh, it's, it's great. You no, know, it's great. You have to. Yeah. Um, it's we hard work to volunteer. Yeah. And we do have a few openings, awesome. which is nice. And we, if you have no a member or myself, mm -hmm. you want to contact me, you know, I'd love to sponsor um, someone to be a member. And, you know, you have to go to three meetings and then off and run and you go and have a great time. Um, it's very, very rewarding. Like I said, it's, it's a nice combination of fundraising and service. And I think that's what um, we need in this community. And I think it's um, something that we've been able to provide for 100 years. Um, the Junior Aid women also mm -hmm. cook for the hotel program for a bread of life um, once a month. So wow. they feed 40, uh, 40 people mm -hmm. once a month. Um, and they do a, every, everything. Whatever is asked of them, they do. Oh. And that's what made my presidency very easy. <laughs> is there any, aside from the Girl Scouts, is there anything that you do with um, younger kids? Like, it, it's, it's all women, correct? It's, that's okay. correct. Okay, all right. It's yeah. always been women. Yeah. Um, one of the things we try to do is have um, sort of mother-daughter type events mm -hmm. um, where um, we try to involve the younger kids. Mm -hmm. um, some of them march with us in the parade. Oh, um, so we try to get them involved in some of our activities. Um, but it was it was great to work with the Girl Scouts this past year. It's yeah, that was a really nice. Time. I yeah. thought that was a great, it was a great connection. connection. Definitely Absolutely. the Girl Scouts, and like you said, probably hopefully future and on, juniors. On the mother daughter note, many of us, our daughters are now members. Mm -hmm. I, my daughter is a member, and a few of our other you know members, their daughters are also members. So it's kind That's of nice moving down the generations. Um, it's yeah. a, just a nice group of women. It's a, an honor to be a member there because they're so. Um, they, they have the mission. They know the mission, and they live it. Yeah, I know at the um, All Seasons uh, event, you had pictures up, and I loved looking through that. Actually, I think there were some few couple good ones up there. A few <laughs> 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 uh, but it was it, it, that was really nice to see. And the, the women power in the room, that's what really hit me most. Um, and it was one of my, the first times I went, I actually had to go. This was one of those events that the mayor couldn't make it to, and I read my first um, citation. citation there. I and I was that. very nervous, but everybody was so great. Um, and so that was nice. That I'll never forget that. And, um, and, and again, and it's the funny, women, our older members are you know, so faithful to the organization. And when they joined many, many years ago, um, Zonter and Junior Aid were practically the only two community groups that were available for mm -hmm. women to join. So. Wow. Um, you know, it's it has a lot of history. Right, um, that's nice. Now, t now, don't correct me if I'm wrong, but do you have? Are you the pink jackets? Yeah, the wrong. Okay, <laughs> we're the pink jackets. I pink love jackets. that. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. we're the pink jackets. Okay, that's I'm like. I know I've seen. Uh, yeah, you did you march all in pink? The, I, I wasn't here yes. for the parade. I um, it's one of the first I've missed in in many years. So I was sorry that I didn't get to see you um, leading that. Now, did you? Um, were you? In the front we, or in the yes, we okay. we were able to um, march up front, and then we had the the privilege of watching the whole parade mm -hmm. from the from the um, you know grand yeah. stand. So it was it was quite an experience. Ah, yeah. that's quite great. an experience, quite an honor. Yeah. yeah, like I said, it was it was an honor to share it with the Girl Scouts. Yeah, and it couldn't have been to, yeah a greater group uh, that again I just learned about, but absolutely love. Um, so I want to thank. Uh, you both for coming out tonight thank and you. Uh, thank you for having us. Show. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. you. So uh, I think we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll be speaking with Naomi Brady.
welcome back. And I want to extend a warm welcome to my friend, Naomi Brave, who is one of the members of Malden Arts. But people probably know her best as uh, uh, the woman probably who really spearheaded the Malden Switchbox project. So welcome, Naomi. Hi, thank Hi. you for having me. Yeah, this is very nice. Welcome. It is. It is great <laughs> that um, Naomi is a friend of mine, so I feel very comfortable. Um, but uh, Malden Arts is an extremely active group, and uh, really has been instrumental in promoting the arts here in Malden. Um, why do you think it's been as successful as it's been? Well, I think the main reason, uh, Karen, that's been so successful is we have a really dedicated group of volunteers. Um, it's not yeah. just me. I am the only one sitting here, yeah. but there are a lot <laughs> of people uh, behind me that do a lot of hard work and are very mm -hmm. dedicated to bringing arts to the city. Um, another thing that um, I think is a reason is there are not a lot of activities for adults in Malden. There's mm -hmm. a lot for kids and there's a lot for seniors, but people that fall in the middle are hungry for mm -hmm. um, stuff to do. And art always uh, brings out the best, too, in yeah, people, great. so they're very happy to see it. You do have <laughs> a great, great group um, that you work with. and uh, Absolutely. I know, and they're very dedicated and, you know, it's really been great. I, you know, we've worked together on a couple of projects and um, I think that definitely has something um, to be said, like why you're so successful, you know, and you've been around, because um, it is exhausting, don't you think? Sometimes it can it be. Can be. I mean, we all uh, pretty much work full time mm -hmm. outside of doing this when we can. We squeeze it in, and uh, yeah, yeah, it can it can be a lot, but the rewards are uh, huge. Yeah, you know, I get more yeah. out of it than I put in. I know. I think you so. guys have a lot of fun. <laughs> Definitely, again, an, uh, another fun group. <laughs> And uh, and you like to bring goodies to your, um, which is always uh, good. A lot of the meetings I was going to are nice goodies. There's always good yes. food. <laughs> <laughs> always good food, and uh, that makes people want to come back. So I think I agree. That's definitely been a big part. And um, I went on your website just to again, you know, I've been on it before, but I took a look at it, and um, and that's great too. Like who who does that? I do that. You do? Oh, I do. Actually, I really didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. I do. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I, I try it. and keep it up to date. Ah. Yeah, it is, and it has, um, you know, I think the Malden Arts as an umbrella, um, there's so many things under it, and I think people aren't really even sure where to go, and it's just Malden Arts, so I went to the homepage. Yep, MaldenArts.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then underneath it are different projects, so why don't you tell me a little bit about some of those? Uh, well, our first project uh, in 2006 was Window Arts mm -hmm. Malden, um, and our okay. idea was to uh, pair up artists with stores downtown to try mm -hmm. and sh number one showcase the artists because we have so many talented artists yeah. that are mostly working out of their homes or small studios that aren't open to the public so right. we wanted to get that artwork out there but also try and revitalize the downtown mm -hmm. at the same time so the artists put their work in the stores for three weeks and we create a trifold map that people can just pick up yeah. anywhere downtown and at the library and here at MATV and just walk around and it's like a free outdoor gallery mm -hmm. for three weeks and they get to see what's going on in their town and also maybe stop into a store yeah, at the same time. Bigger so and bigger. Yeah, this yeah. was our seventh year this past year and we had 40 artists. Wow, wow. And it's not just paintings, it's uh, nope. everything. Everything. What did you I your did, art. I um, loved it. my window this year was um, called Sockupy Main Street. I knit <laughs> socks <laughs> love it. and uh, I requested a store on Main Street mm -hmm. and took over the window. Yeah. yeah, that was great. That was great. <laughs> and another thing, I think um, one of the new things th this year was the Teen Center, right? Yes. Was that one of the windows? Yes. I think that, that's right. Yeah, um, I think the high school students uh, were all in there. Oh, okay. That's right. I think so. And uh, so that really brought you know, people down there before it was, I don't even think the building was painted at that time. No. So that was really. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Again, you guys always looking ahead. <laughs> always, yeah, seeing how you can bring that, um, you know, uh, you know. Yeah, and our goal with that is we want to get a little more um, sculpture or street art out there. Like, we always try and get people to do something that's not necessarily in a window, but on a tree or, yeah. you know, somewhere. And we're always working on. I love that. Trying to, you know, expand um, the envelope. Another uh, thing that I saw on there, and actually I'll admit when I first heard it, I was like, what is that? It has nothing to do with hair, but the Malden Salon. <laughs> 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 
Yes. It's taken from the the French sort of have this history of having these art salons where, you know, in France the intelligentsia goes and discusses, you know, all this stuff. And we sort of decided that it would be nice to have a quarterly evening where mm. artists could get together and some some have been um, writers reading poetry, some have been storytellers, we've had mm. music, we've had um, the Irving Street Studios when they all got together, we had them come and talk, we've had the Cultural Council come and mm. talk around grant time to sort of let people know what's involved in the process and yeah, we've had all great. kinds of different I just themes. love what you bring um, Again, everybody that works so hard, and uh, I'm just thinking now, how, how many people would you say? I don't, you don't have like members, right? But there are people that we don't. There's core group. There's about eight of us, yeah. I think that are a core group, and okay. um, we're actually not officially a nonprofit at this point. We're still a grassroots organization, um, mm -hmm. but hopefully this winter we're going to make it official mm -hmm. and become yeah. a nonprofit and maybe great. start having members and stuff. Yeah, I know that's a tough leap. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> from experience. But um, I know, and again, you've done so much, um, your group and organization, to bring the arts um, to Malden. And even for myself, I know I help promote your events too because I just think they're fantastic. Um, but, you know, if you could see, which you do a lot, you guys do see ahead. I see that. I like that. Um, but let's say 10 years down the road, like, what would like be your perfect picture of the art scene here? Like, what would you love to see? in Malden. Well, I would love to see an art center in yeah. the city where people could go and take classes and sort of have, you know, a Friday night coffee house or all kinds mm. of different things. That would be wonderful. And I know there is a group working on that, yeah. um, trying right. to get that together. I would love to see more artist buildings like the Irving Street Studios. Mm. And I've heard about uh, Woolworth Studios, which I don't know if that's mm. open yet, and um, have um, Open studios is definitely yeah. something that we're trying to um, find somebody to sort of take it under their wing because we're all yeah. so busy with what we're already doing. So if there's anybody out yes. there that feels like we're doing right. an open studios no. for Malden, anyone out there? I was just going to say that. <laughs> um, I don't know if people we know. We would love um, to expand. Right. Do you have regular meetings and you do so many different things and probably subcommittees that I don't you know that would be how we would don't someone have get regular meetings now but that's one of the things that I think mm -hmm. officially being a nonprofit would probably help us sort of get right that we meet about four times a year maybe six times a year as a group mm -hmm. but we're always talking and always running into <laughs> each other and and I scheming. Don't know that's right. And you <laughs> probably meet at the uh, Hugh O'Neill's. That's not part of, or is it part of Malden Arts, or do you just go there for fun and do your That is not part of Malden stitching. Arts. We do, um, <laughs> yeah, a Monday night knitting group yes. uh, from 6 to 7.30. Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, um, that um, just uh, formed itself. Yeah, that's great. I think there's just so many people who want to be involved in the arts and just love what you're doing. And, and I don't know if they know, you know, just... Ha, you know, to show up, I guess, at one of your events, talk to you guys to get involved. Well, they can always write to info at MaldenArts.com mm -hmm. if somebody wants to get involved. Um, look at the website, okay. see what's going on, and um, yeah, yeah, do it that way. Shoot us an email, and then probably, you know, a lot, you know, I definitely wanted to ask you this because I know from myself I get the same questions, but um, people confuse the Malden Cultural Council with the Malden art scene. I get that all the time. Um, you know, if you could just briefly say what the difference is for people can. Well, the Cultural Council is a city board that uh, receives money from the state every mm -hmm. year. So the Massachusetts Cultural Council allots Malden a certain amount of money every year. And there's a grant cycle mm -hmm. that uh, is every October 15th, you can turn in your application for a grant. And um, if it's approved, by the Cultural Council, you get some of the state funding, uh, whereas Malden Arts has no money at mm -hmm. all, and we, <laughs> yeah, for money. Any donors we apply there? to <laughs> the Cultural Council for grants. Uh, the Switchbox Project mm -hmm. and Window Arts Malden were both started with grant money from the Cultural Council, yeah. um, but now they're both self-supporting. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. Um, I, I know, because I get that too, and I was on the, I am on the Cultural Council, <laughs> and, but I think what confuses people is that because you're so active, there are members that switch, you know, off and on. But um, yeah. you know, who better to know uh, about the grant process and um, you know t to meet in 
get the word out about the you know artists and artists themselves. Um, so, and I do know if you do submit, um, you have to recuse yourself. Um, yes. So, um, you know, that's just a, a good difference that we need <laughs> to you know put out there because Absolutely. I think people definitely think I think sometimes they confuse that you're a city group, but you're not. You're a group of volunteers. You're in the city, but you're working hard. On We're your all own a group of volunteers. That's right. Absolutely. So there's no funding, but if you wanted to fund, please do. <laughs> <laughs> So I think our time's about up. Um, and thank you so much, Naomi, for coming out. Thank you. Out. And thank you for my little gift of homemade. <laughs> thank you for staying with us. Um, our next guest is Marilyn Andrews, who is the president of Malden CPAC. And we might as well just start right off with, um, why don't you tell me what CPAC stands for? Uh, the Malden CPAC is a Special Education Parent Advisory Council. And in the state of Massachusetts, uh, all 351 cities and towns are required by law to have a parent advisory council of special education. Okay, great. So you're there really to guide parents um, and, and really help them navigate through the special education system. So um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about how you do that, how someone would contact you, and where do you take them from there? Uh, it's, a, it's a real... Um, gamut of many different mm -hmm. things, but the best way to start is I can give you a little background to our offices and our training. I'm the president, as you said, mm -hmm. Wendy Tro and these are all people that are parents within the Malden Public School System. Wendy Tobin is our vice president in parent support. Mm -hmm. She was trained with the Federation for Children with Special Needs, so she does a lot of outreach to parents and tells them pretty much the guidelines, the, the regulations, and how to go about things. Rose mm -hmm. Kilbride is our secretary, and Lisa D'Angelo, who was a Ward 5 school committee person, is our, uh, our treasurer. Uh, and basically, what we do is we work in conjunction with the special education department, with the administration, with Mara Johnson, who's the director of pupil personnel services, mm -hmm. uh, Betsy Hannafin, who is the elementary program director, Anna Carl Hannafin, who is a preschool director, and Ida O'Leary, who is the secondary level director. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep the, the uh, connections, the communication open between the two. They've been very uh, good, very positive to work with. That's so we great. work with them, get their message, you know, the programs they have going on. We bring it out to the community. Um, we also provide programs, first of all, for parents, grandparents, caretakers. You'd be uh, amazed at the number of grandparents and caretakers yeah. that are also raising the children, as well as parents. Yeah, I've been so to a few of your events. Yeah. I no, did notice good. that. Yeah. Um, and, and you it's, know, it's great. It's nice because yeah. it's the whole cycle of life. It's great you that know? they're reaching out and yeah. they know they can get help somewhere. So, yeah. you know. That is, and, that is good. And from those meetings, what we do is, you know, people will give us the email addresses or ways to connect with them. So we'll follow up. They'll come with questions. We talk to them after the meeting. Sometimes we meet one-on-one -on -one for coffee. Mm -hmm. And just basically they'll say, this is my child's diagnosis. This is what's going on. This is what I need help with. Um, and we'll take them step by step, tell them how to go about the mm -hmm. whole process. It's very overwhelming when it's your own child. And if Absolutely. you see something that you think, you know, that's a, this uh, symptoms of autism or an emotional disorder or a learning disorder or along those lines. You, yeah. For us, like in my own family, it was like a black hole. You don't know where to mm -hmm. start. You know, there's a lot of services, people out there to help you, but right, you don't how do you go, go about it? So um, we're trying to fill that void for that's people. That's right. And I think yeah. it's so great. That's really what struck me most when, um, <coughs> you know, I saw what you did and I went to some of your meetings. Yes. And so say for a parent who they haven't gone to a doctor, have no diagnosis, could they contact you to say, I think I might have a problem here? Like, how, what would you suggest they, what would be the first step? The first step, I think, is a variety of different things. Um, we have a website, which is www.maldenpack.org. Um, you can contact us. Actually, each school has these posted, which is um, a special education mm -hmm. background sheet that gives information to what oh, we do good. and how to contact us. And these are not only posted, it's supposed to be posted in the schools, but mm -hmm. also they're given by the team chairs and different school personnel to parents, too. But to answer your question, um, you can contact us, you can contact your teachers and say this is where I need to get started and they have that information. Okay. But um, you one start thing with the teacher. Start with the teacher. Okay. Basically you can really in a lot of cases start with us because we've had more of a range of dealing with, like I'm dealing with my son with a um, disability and we've all, our parents with kids with disability and have done a lot of community mm -hmm. work. So that, um, in that sense. parent to parent. Right, exactly. Start that helpful. way. And then we provide mm -hmm. some coaching and sort of empower parents. This is how you go about it. Mm -hmm. You know, try to help them fine tune what the needs and concerns are. Because, you know, as a parent, you go and it's like, oh, uh, yeah. there's so much here. It's almost like the end of that Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah. That's all, that's folks. <laughs> you just don't know where to start. And I find with True. my head, at least, that's what happens. So we try to sort of set people on the right path. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I will mention too, Karen, and I left my cheat sheet out there, but I have it <laughs> in my head. Um, there are federal regulations for what the disabilities are that are covered across the country and in the uh -huh. state of Massachusetts, and I can name a few. There's a couple. There's autism. There's, um, and I'm trying to think of this off of my head. There's different sensory impairments, you know, mm -hmm. somebody who's deaf, somebody who's blind, or a child that's deaf blind. There's developmental delays, and that covers children ages three through nine. Uh, there's communication mm -hmm. impairments. There's emotional impairments, such as children that have mental illness and um, Tourette's. Mm -hmm. There's a lot within that. The health impairment is one thing that's also very important because that's a lot of medically fragile, ki fragile kids or kids with chromosomal mm -hmm. ab abnormalities. And I will say, we're just, and as you know, the yeah. mayor's office, is, this is our step in January, mm -hmm. is going to come and tour some of these programs right. because these children, too, need access to, to yes. education. And you we actually all got some dates for you. Oh, just today. yay. I'll give it to you later. But, um, <laughs> but you've all been very instrumental mm -hmm. in keeping that communication going. And we fill our role as a PAC when we send our emails out is just to let people know all this is going right. on because we um, kind of all did it on our own with the help of the school, but mm -hmm. we were at a point where so much was so new and so kind of yeah, I don't overwhelming. Think people know that you know they don't know where to start and where right. to go. So I think that that is great, and I think what you just explained was that um, the different diagnoses under would that be under like the umbrella of special needs when you talk about special needs. I don't know if people even know what right. exactly that means. So everything you just named would that, fall under that. But yet there's a few more. Yeah. There's um, specific learning disability. I named the health mm -hmm. impairment. Um, I will say that there's, it's very easy to access. It's on our website, www.maldenpack.org. It's also right down the street mm -hmm. at the Department of Education. You can look them up online, the Department of Education in Malden, Mass. Their office is on Pleasant Street. It's that red brick building right oh, next yes, to the parking right. lot. Mm -hmm. You can go into the first floor. There's a help center, and they'll give you everything you need to. So we work yeah. in conjunction with the information they give out. We also work with the Federation for Children with Special Needs, which Wendy Tobin, who is our vice president in parent support, is trained mm -hmm. and is an absolutely okay. ex excellent resource. I'm just finishing my training, yes. too, but as you know, I also am yep. going for my masses. So um, we all have our own talents. Um, I've met Wendy, and yeah, Wendy's so great. both of you come to Malton Promise, right, which right. I think is great because right. we definitely, um, you're always very helpful um, when we're talking about, um, you know, services for our youth here. So yes. it's so great um, to have you guys at the table. Well, there. we appreciate the invitation, and to be honest with you, when we come to a meeting, we usually go back and brainstorm with, you know, the executive board and other people just to say, well, what do you think? What would you mm -hmm. suggest? Because it's, oh, that's great. you know, I'm looking at the dropout that. rate. Absolutely. It's scary, it is. you know, so. And but we commend the program, and we are very honored to be a part of yeah, it. Yeah, and we love having you there, definitely. Thank you, and I love your energy, <laughs> as you know, so. <laughs> so, um, and actually that's, you know, one of the things that Malden's promised, that we all, as a coalition, there's probably at least 30 of us that show up, um, you know, give or take, and as a coalition decided that mental health issues were going to be something right. that we would focus on. Um, so that's why it's very helpful to have, you know, you guys at the table. We have, you know, many people from all over the city that are working with us on that, too. Um, so as CPAC, I see you as an information, like, yes. navigation. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're just you're yeah. giving people information. Um, so I know that you're a teacher, but you're not um, special ed, uh, well, let's see, like maybe psychiatrists, social workers, anybody? No, that's, that? okay. yeah, but right. I can tell you so the network, and I have to say it's that quote, it takes a village. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of in talking with Mara Johnson, who's our special education director, and her whole team there, yeah, I was impressed because after the incident Friday at the mm -hmm. Sandy Hook School, it, being a parent of a child with a disability and, and networking with some other parents too, it's overwhelming because the event is horrific, and mm -hmm. I can't even fathom the loss of the families in the school but then you mm -hmm. also say you have a child here with a disability and not that I'm making excuses but yeah. is this you know the things are oh, saying is this a child that needed help along the way you know and immediately mm -hmm. people start throwing out different things he could I have know. this he could have this and you really don't know so it impresses the need upon you need a good system within the school and within Absolutely. Malden we have um, you know I just sort of I was amazed but basically we have you know clinical we have psychologists mm -hmm. clinical social workers we have a couple psychiatrists, Dr. Zenia Johnson and Dr. Nancy Rappaport, who I just heard on BUR this uh -huh. week, um, that do a lot of mental health work out of Cambridge Health Alliance. And I will say they are the top, yeah, you know, and great. Dr. Kathy Quill, who does a lot of work with autism. And these are the people that people need to hear, need to hear from. That's um, right. Right. One of the you questions know, I was going to ask, and I know it is a tough subject and a tough question, was, you know, if you anticipate, um, because of, the, you know, our, the recent activity, it, 
increasing um, a need to increase your services? Like, do you think people will now reach out maybe, I don't know, um, more so? You know, I have to tell you, the questions that you gave me, they were all very good. And as I said, we, we are networked. But that, I don't want to say it's my favorite, but I thought that was the most poignant question. We have started to do that. Mm -hmm. Elliott Human Community Services, which is here on Eastern Ave in Malden, does a lot of work with children with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So we've gone to this support group. We went to one meeting in the fall, met with the parents, and basically they said, these are my issues, this is what I need to do. We said, this is how you go to the school, this is what you look for, you know, this is the language or whatever. So, yeah. And that's an ongoing communication, so that's one way we're trying to reach out. Yeah. Um, we've done some work with Criterion Early Intervention, and those kids are a variety of things. Mm -hmm. they may, there are some mental health issues in there, too. So we're slowly getting That's our way great. into the community. I mean, it's so glad, especially, again, after this, I'm, I'm so glad that you are a guest here so that now people know that there is help out there and, you know, where they can get it. So um, I really appreciate it, and I applaud the work that you guys do. No, well, um, we appreciate so your you. support, too. So thank you very so, much. Yeah, so our, our okay. time is just about up, yep. but I think uh, I hear you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, you thank know, you, Karen. Okay. And back and our next guests uh, we have two actually uh, special guests here tonight we have Suat and Habiba who are both from the American Association of Arab Women thank you for coming out tonight thank you for having us oh, you're very welcome um, so we met um, pretty maybe about a couple two years ago um, is that when your group first started you're relatively new but you're doing fantastic things. You've done so much that you don't feel new, but you're relatively new. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what your organization yeah. is? So the American Association is a grassroots nonprofit organization that was created by a group of uh, intellectual people in uh, 2010. Okay. So like uh, our goals, especially to empower uh, Arab women and like uh, especially through the whole state of Massachusetts. We do help like uh, especially newly arrived women. That's right. mm -hmm. And we always say by helping the Arab women, we are helping the family. Mm -hmm. And like uh, one of uh, our goals is just like to help with the language or have that communication with the other part, like if they need help through schools mm -hmm. or if they need help otherwise, like register children at their schools or do things like that and we do have a uh, few workshops that we do just like to empower women and uh, show them their uh, rights to uh, have like a better leadership in their uh, community and in their family and uh, like uh, especially we want we want to assist them and make life easier in mm -hmm. uh, America right just I like went especially to one of yours and um, where you had a speaker it might have been in the library, I'm going to say, um, and that's what she spoke to. It really resonated um, with me uh, about helping people who had, you know, come here. Yes, um, 
and basically and need the gap between right. the two cultures and how people adapt to the new society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, who did you found this organization? Yes. Okay, and I'm sure you had help. Um, yes, but, uh, I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and and. How did, you know, what motivated you to Which, uh, especially like the uh, Arab community was growing mm -hmm. and uh, everybody knows I work at the bank and uh, like that's how I met mm -hmm. all these uh, people. And some of them, they really need help with a lot of things. So mm -hmm. sometimes you don't have time to help them through work. So you do set up time after work or things like that. And uh, when you go and help them, register the child or do a translation or interpretation for them mm -hmm. you feel like you were not that welcome but through an organization and association mm -hmm. it's well done like the other parts do accept you more you're so that's the you're part of a community yes yeah. now habiba how did you get involved are you from the very beginning or did it was from the very beginning mm -hmm. i i was um briefed um Sad and I, well, our friends, and we go back uh, oh. a, a, a long time. And she was, uh, every time we used to get together, she always had stories to tell about these families newly arrived to the United States mm. with difficulties adapting to the, the American society and the new culture, uh, with problems with interpretation, like she said, and mm. uh, translation, uh, problems in uh, their households, uh, and things like that. So she always, um, talked about creating mm -hmm. a nonprofit organization where we could all get together um, and help each other uh, start this wonderful thing in Malden mm -hmm. where ha families can actually pick up a phone and talk to a live right. person in their own language and be, be able to uh, uh, yeah. get the resources yeah. available to them uh, through us. It's such uh, a wonderful thing. It was a, such thing. a wonderful thing People to do. People say things a lot, but you know, to actually do it is another thing. It it's hard a work. And ha yeah, absolutely. Where did you start out meeting? Like, how did you? Oh, well, it started uh, meeting in um, restaurants, sometimes uh, mm. uh, in her house or mine. Mm -hmm. Or, it, uh, like I said, the, the biggest challenge we're facing right now is not having an office. Mm -hmm. it's, um, we're trying to raise as much money as we can to be able to have a location and uh, have, you know, uh, people there on a schedule who can help. We're only doing this on a voluntary That's basis. Right. And you were working. I remember she's a full time I <laughs> you telling stories when you had your uh, your award from the YWCA, right. which was uh, great, but you telling stories about people coming to your bank to talk yes. to you, but about um, yeah. your group. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Her house too and mine. Now mm -hmm. we end up doing partnership with Citizens Bank. Really? Oh, yes. congratulations. That's great. <laughs> Thank Good you. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. So and now you guys we, are moving. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's good. So um, what kind, you know, do you, have you reached any, you know, hit any barriers um, here that make it difficult to do the things that you well, do? Well, some things are difficult, especially being a full-time employee. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to leave work like two hours earlier or come late. It's difficult to manage that time mm -hmm. with the manager. That's right. It's a little bit difficult to tell them, oh, I need to go here, I need to go there, I need two hours <laughs> here, three hours yeah. there. It's uh, really difficult. Mm -hmm. And Habiba too, she has three yes, children and right. she has to like take care of them and still she does find time for uh, people to mm -hmm. assist with certain things. It is difficult. Right. That's why uh, we need like location because I always say we have a lot of people who wants to help, mm -hmm. but it's not easy to make that help from them uh, like uh, smooth. Right. We, you, since I feel like the office is mm -hmm. a big barrier yeah. because once you have an office, you can yeah, meet you people and people. you can set up exactly. like uh, tasks yes. for each person and right. they can help you. But since you don't have that, it's, you can do everything on your own. Right. And, and it safety, is hard. You know, having people, you know, come to your home. Exactly. It, 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 it's, that's it's, yeah. that's yeah. a big issue. issue. Yeah. That is a big yeah. issue. Right. Um, so I know, and I know, like I said, I have, you know, I go to a lot of community events. I'm out and I see you two everywhere, which is fantastic. We try. Uh, yeah. We try. <laughs> it's good. Try to be part of the community. Absolutely. That's what's all it's about. about. Yeah. Like, uh, we want to be part of the community. It's not like uh, Arab people, Arab people like, yeah, where they are. We are here. Mm -hmm. We want to be part of you. We want you to know about us. We right. want to transfer our culture to you, like know us more, mm -hmm. and uh, we know the culture, but we want you to be part of us too. Yeah, I think you've done a great job doing that, really. Um, it's impressive because 
you, you did reach out, you've come to events. So sometimes people, you know, will say, I don't feel a part of something, but they don't, you know, reciprocate. It, yeah. it, it needs a back and forth. And, and exactly. you coming out, people feel more comfortable going to you. And I think that really showed at that event you had at the Senior Center um, a while back. It was a, a dinner or something. Ramadan. Ramadan Iftar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was one of our uh, very successful events. And um, people are still talking about it. Oh, yeah. And, uh, W that was uh, it back in uh, August, uh, earlier in August, and it was during the month, the holy month of Ramadan. So That's it right. was. We took that as an opportunity, uh, mm. you know, to uh, uh, present Ramadan, and uh, we had Share the presentation. Share our yes. culture, exactly. And uh, we right. invited uh, a person who was uh, the spokesperson was uh, a PhD holder in Islamic studies and Quran. So mm. she was the perfect person to actually. Uh, introduce uh, Ramadan uh, in, uh, in Islam and what it means right. and why we do it. Uh, and after her presentation, we followed it by a delicious meal. Yes, <laughs> and there was people there from all different. It wasn't yes. just that yes. different faiths, different mm -hmm. cultural backgrounds. It was it was a huge success. Yeah, it was definitely. And um, again, it just brings people closer together when you're exactly. sharing, especially breaking yes. bread. It's just you know, absolutely. Uh, that's a great way, um, you know to get to know each other. So um, if people wanted to join, how would they go about doing that? We have memberships, and uh, mm -hmm. it's like $50 a year. Mm -hmm. It's not much. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, want, if someone wants to volunteer with us, it's the same thing. Yeah. And we do have a website. Okay. It's uh, www.americanarab. I think I put it up there. I think you I have put that? it up there. Yeah, I think I've, I looked at it and, and, uh, and put it up there. And you have a Facebook page, too. Yes, so yes we do. It's a um, community I page. I think our yeah. uh, time is, uh, I'm, I'm being told, to wrap okay. it up. But it yeah. was such a pleasure, always a pleasure, um, speaking with the both of you. And I'm so glad that you're here in our community. Um, thank you for all that you do. Thank, thank you for uh, having uh, us. Thank you're welcome. Thank you for having us. May I and, just uh, say one last thing, please? Sure. I'd like to thank you for having us here. And also thank Mayor Christensen for all his support. Absolutely. Uh, he's been attending most of our events. And he does. Uh, his encouragement and support means a lot. Yes. And we just encourage the, the community to do the same and be part of this wonderful association and help us move forward. Mm -hmm. If we all come together, we can achieve a lot more than what we're doing right now. I agree. Well Thank said. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, welcome back. Our final guest of the e evening is Heidi Sutherland. Um, last but certainly not least, <laughs> leader of the Girl Scouts in Malden. Uh, yes. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we really don't have to explain who the Girl Scouts are. Um, no, I would yeah. imagine not. Everybody no. knows Girl Scouts and Cookies. That's right. Everybody knows Girl Scouts and Cookies, but I don't know if everybody knows that it's the 100th year anniversary for the Girl Scouts. Well, if they didn't see the parade, they probably <laughs> don't. Um, you yeah. know, as you know, we, we did up some beautiful t-shirts. That was great. We're really very happy about that. And that's Girl Scouts of the USA mm -hmm. is celebrating their 100th. Girl Scouts of Malden actually has three more years, and then we hit our 100th. Oh, really? Oh, so we yes. get to do it again. Yes, Yay. yes. <laughs> um, Girl Scouts of Malden, it's been tracked back to 1915. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, well, that's we're great. really excited about that. And then we've also got the oldest active troop in at least Massachusetts, if not the country. We've got one mm. troop that's been going since 1947. Wow. And they still get together oh, every year. Every year. That's um, amazing. I've had some great conversations with a lot of these ladies yeah. over the past couple of weeks. Um, they're 73 year old women. They've been friends since oh, at least high school. Uh, well, actually, they've been friends since 1947 when they started doing Girl Scouts. Yeah. And they still get together. That's great. Yeah. I, it really is. And, um, you know, the Girl Scouts have been doing such fantastic things here. And I really have seen more and more and more of you. Um, we tried. The past we couple of years, which has been just great. Um, and at the parade, I did hear that you had a huge showing and all those t-shirts. I've heard people, I didn't, yes. couldn't make it to the parade this year, first yes. time in, in a long time. But um, that's what people were talking about, really. Um, yeah. Well, we wanted, we wanted something to unify us and to show mm -hmm. the reason behind why we were up there. Right. Um, in all the past years, we've always done a decorated sweatshirt, mm -hmm. and as long as I've been involved, and as you know, my oldest yeah. is a 10th grader, so I've been involved since she was in kindergarten, and we've never had a mm -hmm. Malden Girl Scouts t-shirt or anything of the sort, so I thought it was really important. Oh, yeah, that and I think that that's going to be great. That, yeah. Your daughter leads now, or she yes, co-leader? Yes, she is, she is the She's junior great. parade coordinator. She has <laughs> stepped up and shifted me off to the side, so... Oh. 
it, it's nice. Uh, she was originally dubbed Big Mouth. She's mm -hmm. the one that starts all the chants. <laughs> That's and right. And she likes that, but she had to make a choice. It was the American flag or junior parade coordinator, and she uh. finally decided she'd step up and give up the flag. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, good for her. Anyway, she's, and she's great at what she does. I know my little one is, was, you know, in her troop. And, and, yes, and Chelsea she, does that was great. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so for the 100-year um, anniversary, what kind of things have you done here in Malden? Oh, geez, we've done lots of things. Um, Girl Scouts anniversary is actually in March. So okay. back in March, we did a friendship circle right. over at the stadium, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of the junior aid women had come That's and joined right. us because a that lot of them fantastic. are Girl Scouts. We had somewhere mm -hmm. close to about 100 people. The mayor came and joined right. us, um, has officially become an honorary Girl Scout. We, he, he loves it. He, yes. was, he was pinned <laughs> also. Um, so that's where we did the Girl Scout Promise, the Girl Scout Law, sang a couple of songs, mm -hmm. had a really good time with that. Um, back at that time, we also did our atomic bowl over at the town line. Uh -huh. we, we do a bowling event every year, and this time we went evening, pizza party, mm -hmm. celebrated, sang happy birthday, all of the fun stuff. Uh -huh. um, we, we did the uh, no-sew blankets with the junior aid. That's right. Um, which, That's another great. thing that your, I love yourself that you were as well as, up. And I, yeah, yes, it's we were great. There. Um, and I mean, I think they're a great group, and it's something for our girls to aspire. Absolutely, it's a perfect you know, match. Exactly. Yeah, so, we were talking about that earlier. And we've actually got another event coming up in January where we're doing another blanket oh. um, drive, and we're actually donating those over to um, the Crossroads Family Shelter. Oh, the ones nice. that we did back in April are going into the Neely Foundation. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that they probably yeah. mentioned that earlier, and thankfully mm -hmm. they don't have a need for them, so we're not yeah. necessarily in a rush to hand them out. Oh. You know, if, if they don't have anybody in there, that's perfectly fine by us. Oh. Yeah, you guys uh. have uh, honestly, really, can't say enough about um, how great it's been and the presence that you have uh, made. I think a lot of that, you know, um, I could be biased, but maybe since um, <laughs> you've been running the thing, you know, it just it, sometimes things just cross over and turn over, and 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 um, it's been really nice. Um, and it's great, you know, always seeing the Girl Scouts around doing that. And again, I'm biased because I have some kids in it. But one of the things that I really love is the, um, the projects, the community projects, the mm -hmm. service projects. Yeah. So um, why don't you tell me a little bit about what that is? Well, one that we just started up this year is um, we did Trick or Treat So Others Could Eat, mm -hmm. where we had a lot of Girl Scouts out in the rain mm -hmm. the Sunday before Halloween in their costumes doing Trick or Treat door to door oh. for canned goods which we right. donated to the Maplewood Baptist Church Food Pantry mm. um, because the Baptist Church actually houses three of our, three of our troops? Yes, three of our troops. Oh, right. And so we try to help them out, you know, because they give us the space free of charge. Anytime we need anything, they're right there. Um, so, I mean, we had quite a bit of food mm -hmm. um, and even some cash donations that were given right. to us. Yeah, that was we a went, great idea. And we went, it. and somebody had recommended toilet paper mm -hmm. oh, for yeah, the food yeah, pantry. Right, right. So we did. We went and we bought mm. two big cases of toilet paper and brought those yeah. down and left them there. Um, but yeah. as you know, we always do, we do all three of the parades every year. We right. do the flags for the Civil the War flags, veterans at the Forestdale yeah. Cemetery. Mm -hmm. They've been doing that um, forever. Okay. And, you know, so it's, we're just mm -hmm. trying to get out there and we're stressing the importance right. of giving back to your community. Um, I don't want you to leave here without telling how, because I know you're always <laughs> in desperate need of leaders. Um, yes. Lots of girls, no leaders. How can they yes. contact you if somebody wants to be a leader, which I strongly suggest? Well, what people tend to forget is that we're all volunteers. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a full-time parent, single parent. I work full-time, all of this. Um, but we have set up a brand new email, um, Girl Scouts of Malden. Okay. at gmail.com. Okay. So if they want any information pertaining to Girl Scouts, okay. they can contact me there. Thank you so much, My Heidi. Pleasure. Thank you Thank so you much for, for coming me. out Thank here. You. Doing great things here, Malden. Thank you. So, um... Get out of the dock and into the zone.